Everyone right to go? Excellent. Thanks for joining us this morning. 91.2 per cent of Victorians aged 16 and over have had a first dose and 73.7 per cent of 16 plus have received a second dose and are fully vaccinated against the coronavirus. Uh, that is a fantastic effort and something that every Victorian who's gone and had uh, two doses can be proud of. All of those who've had a single dose and are waiting for the interval to pass, uh, we're proud of you and you should be proud of yourself. There's nothing more important than getting vaccinated. Uh, no rules, no uh, restrictions are as important and are as effective uh, as two doses of any of these COVID-19 vaccines. That's why as we get more and more people through the vaccination program, as we have more and more people fully protected, we have many more options. And we will be looking and we will be delivering the kind of, we've said that we wanna normalize this. We wanna move through this gateway, as difficult and as challenging as that will be for those who do become unwell, the vast, vast majority of whom will be unvaccinated Victorians. Now that will put significant pressure on our health system. That'll be very challenging for our nurses and the rest of the health team. But there's essentially a deal here. There's a contract. There's a fundamental agreement that we have reached with the Victorian community. We asked you to get vaccinated. You have done that in record time and in record numbers. Uh, and that means we have to open the place up and we have to have a, a series of rules. We have to have settings that are the lightest touch possible, that are the simplest, that are the most easily understood that are as close to normal life as possible. That's what we committed to, and that's what we are going to deliver. Can I just quickly run through the numbers of the day, and then I'm gonna talk about what happens when we get to 90%, and then Martin is gonna speak about what happens from the end of this week when we get to 80%. So I'll try and be as quick as I can to get to that. Uh, 39,250 vaccines were administered yesterday in state clinics. Just goes to show, you know, we're, we're open, the lockdown's ended. We've got some very exciting announcements to make today, but we've got to finish this off. People have got to go and get their second dose. Bring that second dose forward if you can. Turn up for your appointment. If you're on the fence and haven't made an appointment yet, please go and do that. It'll keep you out of hospital and it'll help us get open quicker. Speaking of hospital, there's 787 COVID patients currently in hospital. Uh, that's a seven day average of 793. 146 are in intensive care, 93 on a ventilator. Uh, in intensive care, 93% are not fully vaccinated. So the people that are getting the sickest are the people who have not had a first dose or a second dose. Uh, if you don't want to finish up in hospital, if you, don't, if, you want to be in a, if, you, if you don't want to be an avoidable admission, please go and get vaccinated. Community pharmacy, GPs and our state hubs indeed pop-ups and neighbourhood pop-ups. We're literally going door to door, street by street. It's never been easier to get vaccinated. And of course, the vaccinated economy is here to stay. So for every reason, for every reason, uh, please join the more than 5 million Victorians who've had at least one dose. Now I'm uh, sad to have to report that there are 11 people who have passed away uh, from the coronavirus, one in their 50s, one in their 60s, four in their 70s, three in their 80s and two in their 90s. We of course send our condolences and our best wishes uh, and our thoughts to the families and friends of each of those 11 people. This will be an incredibly difficult time for them. There were 69,624 tests that were processed, uh, 1,935 new cases, all locally acquired. Uh, that takes us to a total of 24,993 active cases. Uh, now, the national plan talks about once you get to 90%, you should have enduring settings. You should lock in those settings. And it's our approach to try and achieve life as close to normal as possible once we get to that milestone. We estimate that that will be on or about the 24th of November. 90% of Victorians 12 and over will have had uh, two doses. That is about as protected as we are ever going to be. Now, of course, we're not gonna call time. We'll keep encouraging people to come and be part of this vaccination program. Every single dose matters, and then we'll soon get into boosters. So uh, this is a very big milestone, 
uh, and it is about that deal, that fundamental agreement that we made with the Victorian community. So, what I can announce is that from on or about the 20, Wednesday the 24th of November, when we have reached 90%, uh, because we're a government that does what it says uh, and delivers on the commitment it makes, there will be a fundamental change, a massive change in many respects, to the rules that we've all been living under. What that means, there will be no caps anywhere. There will be no density quotients anywhere. Masks will only be required in high-risk indoor settings, for instance, public transport, uh, prisons, hospitals, aged care, to give you some uh, examples. Uh, we will retain the vaccinated economy, all those requirements, all those settings, where you only get in if you are double vaxxed and you can tap and verify that for everybody. That vaccinated economy is here to stay. It will not be being folded up moments after it gets to full peak. In fact, we will add to the vaccinated economy by asking and mandating uh, that all non-essential retail uh, will have to be vaccinated as well, both to go in and also to work in those settings. Martin, I have a bit more to say about that because of course that opens up at 80%, which is this weekend. I'm talking about the final step, if you like, in this roadmap. Uh, we will uh, also make sure that when it comes to events, uh, we'll do one-off approvals, a single gateway, if you like, for events across the board. There'll be policy, there'll be COVID safe planning, but it, it will not be an event by event, uh, day by day, endless paperwork, moving through those kind of approval gateways. We'll try and make that as simple as we possibly can. For state significant venues, uh, there will be a one-off approval. There'll be a policy, there'll be things that have to be done. But we're looking to get those events, both indoor and outdoor, we're looking to get those as close to normal as possible. So for instance, uh, I'll get ahead of one of you asking me, I'm sure you will. Uh, I wanna see 80 plus thousand people at the Boxing Day test on day one. That's what I want to see. And we are determined to deliver that. Uh, it won't be easy. Uh, I think selling the tickets will be pretty easy, uh, but we are very confident, very, very confident that we'll, we will be able to deliver that, provided Victorians continue to get their second doses, uh, and those who haven't yet made up their mind, go and get your first and second dose. Every person who's vaccinated in good time gives us more options, gives us more freedom, sees less people in hospital, less pressure on our nurses. Uh, it is for every reason the best thing to do. They're free, they're safe, they work, they get us open and they keep us out of hospital. So that is a very big change moving to very few rules, very few rules. And I'd summarise them as such. Some masks in some settings, principally indoors, where there is a greater risk. And the economy being open to you only if you have had two shots, only if you are fully vaccinated. They are the two rules that will be enduring. They are the two rules that will be with us right throughout 2022. Uh, that is as close to normal as any part of our nation and any part of the world can be. And it is all a credit to the millions and millions of Victorians who've been through so much and have yet again done what we asked of them. Please go and get vaccinated. People have done it in record numbers. They've done it in record time. I could not be more proud of every single Victorian who has, as I said, been through so much but done so well. This means, as I said last week, when we got to 90%, we wanted as few rules as possible. That's exactly what we are going to do at 90% double dose. In the meantime, 80% double dose is a very significant milestone as well. Martin's going to remind us of all the things that matter and all the things that happen once we get to 80% double dose. I'll steal some of his thunder by saying that I can confirm that at 6 p.m. this Friday, we will flick the switch and we will move to 80%. Whether we have ticked over the 80% settings, uh, we will definitely do that over the course of the weekend, whether it's Friday, Saturday or Sunday. It kind of depends on which data expert you talk to. Uh, but from 6 p.m. on Friday, the 80% settings, so one set of rules that covers the entire state freedom of movement across the entire state 
and many other things that Martin will go to. But that means it's a proper uh, Melbourne Cup long weekend, informally, uh, for people to travel, to book, holidays, to do all sorts of different things. Uh, hopefully that is positive news for everybody. I would just say that uh, just one thing I wanted to, uh, to call out, particularly for those watching and listening in regional Victoria, one of the uh, consequences of moving to one set of rules for the whole state, as we had indicated we would do at 80%, is that some things at the moment are open, whether you're vaccinated or not, in regional Victoria. That will not be the case after 6pm this coming Friday. The vaccinated economy, because we're unifying and having one set of rules for the whole state, which is a thoroughly good thing, the vaccinated economy will then apply across all settings where they apply in Melbourne now and only some in regional Victoria, they will be across the board. Uh, so we'll obviously be talking to industry, talking to those who will need to make changes uh, around that. Uh, but that's, that's been coming for a while and I, I don't think that'll be a surprise to anybody. But when you have one set of rules, that means that the vaccinated economy will operate across the board. Two doses or you're not getting in. Two doses or you're not going to work in one of those settings. Uh, this is absolutely critical. And the feedback I get is that people, people are reassured to think that the person they're sitting next to, the person they're uh, by choice or otherwise spending time with, the person they're being served by is fully vaccinated. That's the feedback that I get. People believe that it is safer. People are confident that they're being surrounded by people who've done the right thing. They've protected themselves. I said uh, when I came back from uh, a lengthy absence that we weren't going to lock the place down to protect people who hadn't protected themselves. We have now reached the time where everyone can be vaccinated. In my judgment, I'd respectfully say everyone should be vaccinated uh, because that gives us options and it takes pressure off our nurses. 90%, very few rules because Victorians have done a mighty job, an amazing job of getting vaccinated. That is, on or about the 24th of November, uh, from this Friday, we'll move to the 80% settings because we will achieve 80% throughout the course of the coming weekend. And to remind us all about what those freedoms look like, what those rules look like, and what the next month will be under those rules, I'll now throw to the Health Minister uh, and, uh, and on your behalf thank him for the, uh, the work that he's been doing to get us to this point. Thank you, Premier. Uh, so, as Premier has indicated, um, the national uh, plan for opening in Victoria and the Victorian roadmap based on the 80% vaccinations for 16 year olds and above uh, will be achieved on all the projections that we've got uh, by this Friday, the 29th of October. And uh, as a result of that, from 6 pm, the public health orders will be changed as per the Victorian roadmap that we distributed um, over a month ago and uh, with uh, some further easings. So as a result of that, just to refresh everyone's memory, most indoor settings, that's restaurants, pubs, gyms, hairdressers, all will open with no caps subject to a one person per four square metre limit if all staff and patrons are fully vaccinated. So you get access to these settings uh, if you are fully vaccinated as both a patron, a customer, and as a employee and workforce. Uh, in regards to uh, most outdoor, steady, outdoor settings will remain at one uh, person per two square metre limit up to the 500 people limit where both staff and patrons are fully vaccinated. Indoor and outdoor settings um, will also be covered by those uh, density quotients as well for things like weddings, funerals, religious gatherings, again if all persons are um, vaccinated. Entertainment venues will reopen for indoor seated venues that include cinemas, theatres, and they will operate at 75% capacity for uh, one person per four square metres. 
up to 1,000 people uh, for non-seated entertainment venues that will be one person per four square metre with no patron cap. Outdoor seated and non-seated venues will include stadiums, zoos, tourism attractions. They'll all be at one person per two square metre limit, up to 5,000 people, again, where staff and patrons are fully vaccinated. Events, including music uh, and festivals, will be able to host up to 5,000 attendees, subject to uh, the restrictions that might apply to that venue. Uh, the Chief Health Officer may also grant approval for larger crowds for significant events and for venues under the public events framework uh, that so many of those venues have uh, become used to over the course of the pandemic. Uh, as the Premier has indicated, masks will remain mandatory indoors but are no longer required outdoors, uh, particularly where social distancing can be achieved. It will be highly recommended that you continue to wear face masks uh, where you cannot physically distance in those circumstances. In regards to regional Victoria and metropolitan Melbourne coming together under the one set of public health rules, that will of course mean that Melburnians can travel to regional Victoria and indeed interstate subject to those interstate rules again. Uh, I just also wanted to touch on vaccinations and uh, seeing the vaccination milestones continue to topple at record rates as more and more Victorians come forward to both look after themselves, look after their community, but also to make sure that they can be part of this opening up uh, and returning to something that looks like a COVID safe normal in 2020 one and on into next year. Just to reflect that something like almost 80% of our 12 to 15 year olds have now received at least one dose of a COVID vaccine. These kids only became available for their vaccine uh, 42 days ago and they are on the rate to essentially meet uh, the same as the over 18 goals that uh, we've set. Uh, we do have uh, some 340,000 second doses to achieve in our vaccine target to reach that 80% double dose for people aged 16 and above. And every indication is across all of the platforms that uh, people are coming forward at in increasing record numbers that we should achieve that uh, on Friday. On average, over the past week, we've landed something like across our GPs, our pharmacists, our community health and our state hubs, something like about 100,000 doses a day. And some of those uh, 60 to 70,000 of those are the second doses uh, as people go through the vaccination journey. And I want to thank all of those people. And I equally want to thank our GPs, our pharmacists, and all of our support staff and clinicians at our state-run clinics who have really been um, working so hard. And just to recall that um, when it comes to the state-run clinics, the original Commonwealth plan had us doing about a quarter to 27% of the vaccines uh, across the state. No state clinic system has delivered anywhere near the numbers that the Victorian state clinics have, and we're pushing around about half of the total vaccines over the course of this year have come from our state-run clinics and I want to thank them. We're also seeing uh, many school pop-ups and local community mini uh, vaccination pop-ups right over the place, particularly in those areas that continue to be of greatest concern for us in the southeast, in the north and in the west uh, and across uh, those high-risk communities. At the moment, uh, we're including Hampton Park Secondary College in Casey, where the doses are almost now up to 95%, and second doses have passed 70% in that community. Uh, we have 17 school pop-ups operating over the course of this weekend, including in Cranbourne West, Frankston North, Melton, Mildura and Box Hill. 
uh, and I'd urge anyone in those communities to hop onto the website. You can just either book or increasingly just show up, but if you're yet to be vaccinated, now's the time to do it. We also have bicultural and multilingual interpreters operating on site at Richmond High, Reservoir High and Melton Secondary College, amongst a range of others, as we really do seek to push the boundaries to get to that 80, 90 and indeed beyond percent of people having the opportunity to be vaccinated. We're currently running 10 uh, community-based mini pop-up sites uh, at that really granular local community level in areas where we need to just put in that last big effort to get people vaccinated. You can just walk up and uh, get vaccinated at any of the following amongst a range of others. There are three Dagani uh, coffee shops, the one at Broadmeadows, the one at Plenty Valley and Roxburgh Park, and of course you also get a free coffee. There are four Headspace uh, centres popping up over the course of this weekend and the next few days to encourage young people uh, who might be uh, distant from normal service delivery programs to come forward and get vaccinated, and they have been very popular. Uh, we're currently running those out at Sunshine, Glenroy, Frankston and Greensboro Headspace. Uh, but of course, we're not there yet. Uh, we are so close to achieving these significant milestones and the re relaxation of the uh, public health orders that go with it. Uh, and we have to, as a result of that, when we do achieve these benchmarks, it's not over. Uh, we have to keep uh, mindful of the fact that there are active chains of transmission out there in the community. Uh, and we were within, so far, the boundaries of what we uh, thought might be the cases in our hospital system uh, and in uh, the boundaries of what we need to do to assist our healthcare professionals to manage that COVID normal across our community. That's why it's so important that people continue to get tested during the course of uh, this continued opening up because the reality is there continue to be more cases than ever in our community. But this is a question of uh, normalising and making sure that our health system copes with the uh, continued transmission, uh, hopefully of declining cases, as more and more people get on top of uh, outbreaks through vaccinations. But testing continues to be important. So please, the message of if you think you've got even the slightest symptoms, even if you are fully vaccinated, uh, the chances of you getting very unwell are hugely diminished, but there is still the chance that you may be able to acquire and pass on uh, the, the COVID-19 virus. So it is still important to come forward and get tested. Um, we are continuing to concentrate our efforts, therefore, on testing and vaccination as a rolled up package in communities including Casey, Melton, Wyndham, Greater Dandenong, Whittlesea and Hume, where we know there continue to be uh, significant active cases uh, across our community. But the same applies anywhere in Victoria. Uh, those vac vaccines, they protect us, they protect our families and our communities, and getting sure that we're ahead of this through testing is the other part of the equation. So please, whilst people are out enjoying uh, family, friends uh, and the opportunities that getting together provide us in the Victorian community uh, over this weekend and indeed once we hit 80% on Friday and beyond, it is still important to make sure that we have the COVID safe plans in the forefront of our minds. Remember that um, as people come together, there are still the opportunities to do that safely, to protect yourself and each other. It's only when people come forward for those vaccinations uh, to get us to 80 and beyond uh, and into the world of 90 and potentially beyond that the freedoms and the opportunities that the Premier referred to will be part of our daily lives. It's up to us all to do our bit to get there. That's when we can enjoy 
all of the things that we like as Victorians and that we love as Victorians, not the least being a Christmas where we can come together as families and communities and move into 2022 in the safest possible way and come back to the kind of COVID safe life that we all look for again. Your vaccination is the ticket for that. Each and every vaccination is another step on that pathway. And I want to thank the Victorian people for their outstanding efforts in getting us to these last two milestones. And can I take this opportunity of thanking yet again our healthcare workforce, uh, our nurses, our doctors, our ambos, our paramedics, everyone who is working incredibly hard now into their 21st month of this global pandemic and who all Victorians op, uh, need to continue to keep in the forefront of our mind as to how we support them. We support them by getting vaccinated and staying safe as we reopen and look forward to a safe 2022 and beyond. Thank you. I'm happy to take any questions you have. And what does Christmas look like when you have more than 30 Yes, there will be no caps. Once we reach 90 per cent on or about the 24th of November, then caps and density quotients and the limits that we've had to have in place because we didn't have a vaccine, we don't need those limits anymore because by that stage, nine out of 10 people will be fully protected by a COVID-19 vaccine. We will be one of the most vaccinated parts of the world and we've got to normalise this. People have got to get back to normal and uh, that's what people are yearning for. And that's what, we're, that's what we aim to uh, deliver. But just as Martin indicated, and just as common sense tells you, we're not quite at 80% yet, so we've got to finish that off. We're not at 90% yet, we're going, we're going to get there. But it, it only happens when individuals make those choices to honour their appointment, uh, to turn up when they say they'll turn up, to bring that appointment forward if they can. And also for people who are sitting on the fence and wondering, will I, won't I, uh, for every reason, for all of us, and for yourself, uh, and to prevent your finishing up in hospital, please go and get your first dose and then get your second dose. And you're wearing masks, the federal government has released a new ad campaign today that shows people in all kinds of settings indoors not wearing masks, including at an airport. Does that marry up with what we're looking at when we reach 90%? Well, I'm not, I haven't seen those ads and I'm not here to comment on the federal government. Today's a very, very good day because Victorians have done exactly what I, what I asked them to do, what we've asked them to do. Uh, you know, we had lockdowns, long lockdowns, because we didn't have a vaccine. We got the vaccine, people have gone and got their first and second dose in record time and in record numbers, and now we can do really special things. Uh, open up, give people the freedom that they're entitled to, let people get back to their as close to normal life as possible, and then continue the really important work of healing the wounds that are there because of this global pandemic and fixing the damage that's been done, growing jobs, delivering our plan for jobs. Uh, we are absolutely committed to doing that. And now, 12 to 15 year olds who haven't been vaccinated are able to access the vaccinated economy. Yes. From Friday, will they also need to be vaccinated to enter the new restaurant shop? Uh, no, I, th I, think, I think it's 16 plus still, uh, where the vaccinated economy applies from 12 up. No, it's 16 as I understand it, but again, I'm happy to. I think the Chief Health Officer was asked this question on Friday, but it's from, it, rem it remains from 16. Is, 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 the, is the advice that I have. No, I was just confirming if people have some changes for those Oh, sure, sure. No. No, no, we're not. So what happens is there are some places in regional Victoria which are not operating as vaccinated economy. From Friday at 6pm they will because we have to have the same rules across the whole state. We're not announcing a change to who is included in the vaccinated economy. 12, 13, 14 and 15 year olds, as I understand it, are not. 16 and up are though. Yes. Yes. Well, I wouldn't describe schools in that way. I think the, probably the better way to describe them is they are an unvaccinated setting. Primary schools, that is. Secondary schools are different. Uh, I'm not here today to make any change, any announcements that change the, uh, the the schools roadmap. The important thing, of course, though, is once we hit 80% on Friday, the following school week, we'll have all of our kids back, all of our kids back into the into the classroom, learning face to face. It's a great opportunity for, to to thank parents, to thank uh, teachers and staff, uh, and of course to thank students for the amazing job that they've done. But that's what 80% makes possible, and in some settings masks will be uh, appropriate. But I think the best way to, to the best way to look at primary schools is in, is in effect 
because we don't have a, ch a, ch a child vaccine, a, a children's um, product, then uh, th that's an unvaccinated place. And therefore there will need to continue to be uh, a range of measures that are not necessary in other settings. Let's hope, let's hope that we get a couple of things from the Commonwealth Government fairly soon. Confirmation about boosters and how that's gonna be done and who's gonna be eligible for a booster and who will need to get a booster for their green tick, for their vaccination certificate to remain current and live. Uh, we, we, we stand ready to play our part in that. We don't quite know what that's gonna be. They haven't told us yet. But the second thing, hopefully quite soon, the federal government can confirm for all of us that they've, that they've ordered a whole lot of paediatric vaccines. I know that's what's happened in, uh, that's what's happened in the uh, US, I understand. Uh, the FDA is due to approve that vaccine very soon, only in a few, few days time. And hopefully uh, we can have the same approvals, you know, in our own time, in our own process, and we can get our kids vaccinated as well. Well, I'm not announcing any changes to the roadmap for schools. And uh, again, 90% is 90% people who are vaccinated. Our kids will not be 90% vaccinated because there's no vaccine for them. So there'll still be, there will still be in, particularly in primary schools, there will still be some rules that have to stay in, stay in place. And uh, I think people, fair-minded people, when they think about it, yep, our kids do not have a vaccine. We've not, vac we've not been able to vaccinate them. So therefore their school, primary school particularly, is gonna look a little bit different. The, the alternative, well, the alternative is we get them vaccinated and hopefully that vaccine turns up soon. This is going to be an area that becomes an increasing issue, I suppose, in the community, though, given that the 14 days to apply to, to apply to kids who get not vaccinated, I think today we've got 200 plus schools that are considered an exposure site. How do we try and, as we're trying to get back to normal, how do well, we keep schools um, going? Well, still sure, we've made... With, I, I, Let's, let's be very clear, today's a positive day and I wouldn't want anyone to be focusing in on the one thing that we can't change. We should in fact celebrate the things that we have been able to change because we've all gone and got vaccinated. If we had a paediatric vaccine, paediatric vaccine, well then I'd have no doubt that we'd be approaching the same numbers, you know, from, from a much younger age group. We don't have that vaccine. Hopefully it comes soon. Schools are gonna to have to look a bit different, but things like furloughing, things like ISO, definitions of close contacts, all of those things have changed and they will continue to change. I'm not here today to make announcements about that, nor am I here to, to, uh, to make any announcements to schools, other than of course the great news is that from not tomorrow, but a week from tomorrow, we'll have all of our kids back in the classroom full time. That's a fantastic outcome. Uh, as soon as we can get our kids vaccinated, we will absolutely do that. And that'll mean schools look different uh, again. Uh, in terms of in terms of you know uh, whether that's something that people focus on, fine. That's you know it's it's a challenging set of circumstances, but it's the one thing that we can't change. So we should be, I think, much more positive, much getting, more much more positive than that. Are you getting any sort of timeline for when a vaccination could be a, a reality for, as you say, it's a consideration? Yeah, of course it is. Of yeah, yeah, of course it is. And I, we want to see as many people protected from this virus in all of its different uh, consequences. So some people get mild illness, some people become gravely gravely unwell. If you are not vaccinated, then you're at much greater risk of getting it. You're at much greater risk of finishing up sick. So I want as many people vaccinated across the board as we possibly can. And I'll be confident once a, once a, a paediatric product is here, then I think parents will, just like 12, 13, 14 and 15 year olds have almost caught up despite they've only, in fact, they've only had a few days really in the scheme of things. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that we'll finish up with very, very high vaccination rates like we do for all the other vaccines that we provide to our kids. Uh, at various points during their uh, during their, their early years. Yes. No, no, there'll be a transition period, and we'll speak with retailers. We'll speak with all sorts of different businesses too. Uh, I might let um, when when uh, well you you can ask him again. Yes. Uh, so adopting the principle that you need to be vaccinated to um, uh, both participate and uh, as both a customer or a client and a, per and a, um, a staff member, uh, those arrangements will apply across the state uh, as per the normal vaccinated economy rule. So you'll need to be vaccinated by uh, this Friday, 6.30pm. Okay, so 
I'll come back definitely, but the, the principle will apply from 6.30 p.m., but we'll come back to you and just uh, clarify that specific detail. And so are you envisaging a similar system to like what we're seeing in pubs and restaurants where someone stands at the door and say, my up, and checks that everything... Well, of course, um, uh, when it comes to non-essential retail, um, uh, as opposed to food and pharmacy and those kind of things where no matter, you know, that's got to be available to everyone, we'll be talking about what's the most appropriate enforcement system uh, with those providers, uh, but the expectation will be that the same uh, compliance regime will apply across the state. So anything that's not open retail-wise right now will only be open to the fully vaccinated ones? Uh, I'll, well, it'll be open as of 6.30, uh, the new rules will kick in. In terms of the expectation, that's the expectation. In terms of the transition and the enforcement, we'll get back to you in terms of the details. So that essentially means someone who's unvaccinated, they can obviously go to the supermarket and buy food, but yes. if they want to go and buy a new pair of shoes at Rebel Sport, they can't? Potentially that's the outcome. But, but bearing in mind that we're talking 90% plus of the Victorian population, and in some areas, well over 90% are already in those uh, spaces. So is that 80% or 90% that that applies? Uh, that applies from uh, th this Friday in terms of the kicking in of the arrangements, but some communities are well above that already. So uh, we're looking forward to how that applies uh, in a consistent way across the state. And in terms of the specific enforcement arrangements and the scheduled dates, we'll come back to you on that. Are you confident, though, that all businesses have hired those three state marshals to check people who are throwing more vaccination status? Uh, overwhelmingly, yes. More than a couple. That's what the Minister said. You've already got to check in. So whether you're going to buy shoes or not, you've, already, you've got to check in, right? What we're going to say from, six, from this Friday night, once we hit 80%, then those shops... So not pharmacists, not the GP, not the supermarket. You will have to be vaccinated because the, the, the virus doesn't much care what you're going shopping for. It just doesn't. And you will, you will spread it. Uh, you will make the job of our nurses harder. And if you're choosing to not be vaccinated, well, that is the wrong choice to make. That is different to what was previously announced. Yes, it is. But yes, that, that absolutely is an addition that we've added that to the vaccinated economy. And it's on that basis that our public health team is confident around the 90% settings and the fact that just about all the rules go. That's, that's why we can do so much at 90 because we've added in and we've made the vaccinated economy not only broader, uh, but we've also indicated, we're very clear about the fact that it's not changing anytime soon. It's going to be here for 2022. Uh, and that's the, that's the kind of trade-off if you like, but I think it's one that's well worth it uh, what, I'll, what we're going to come back to you on, just to be clear, is not when the system starts working, but when, how long staff have got to get fully vaccinated. This becomes a marginal issue, though, quite soon, because we've got so many people across the community and no reason to suspect that retail workers are, are lower. Uh, in fact, many, many people, 90% uh, indeed, quite soon, 80% this coming week, have in fact had two doses. We need to normalise this. We need to move beyond this. We need to open the place up. And we need to recognise that Victorians have done what we asked them to do. Now, we've got to finish that off. I'm not, we're not kind of calling time on it. There are more vaccinations to be administered. There are more appointments to be made and kept, and some brought forward even. But I'm, we are assuming that Victorians are going to do everything they can to race to that 90% number. And once they do, that's as protected as we can be. And it's about delivering and honouring the commitment. As I've said a few times, we only had lockdowns and these rules because we didn't have a vaccine. Now we have the vaccine and Victorians have gone and got the vaccine in record time and record numbers. So we have to push past this. We have to get our freedoms back and we have to make sure that we are functioning as close to normal as possible. We'll continue to support our health team. We'll continue to make sure they've got the, the equipment they need, the funding they need, the support they need, and no one's saying that it's going to be easy for them. It isn't. But uh, we cannot perennially suppress this. We, we simply can't. And 
the national plan kind of like the page ran out. We've today we've now filled in what what our enduring, our long term, our permanent settings will be. That's the certainty that everyone has sought, and that's the certainty that we can give them today, because by the 24th of November, 90 plus percent of us will have gone and had one and two doses. We are not looking to, we're looking to deliver it, we're not looking to pause it. And ultimately, the point I'm making is at 90%, uh, and then 91 and 92, like whatever we get to, that's going to, we're going to be one of the most vaccinated places in the world. Uh, and as I said, no rules, no rules are as effective as two doses of one of these COVID-19 vaccines. It's as good as it gets when we start pushing into the 90s. Now we've got to do boosters. We've got to hopefully roll out a kids vaccine at some point next next year, early next year, hopefully. The feds are the ones who can answer that. So there's going to be lots of work to do. It's not over, but for the purposes of the economy, for the purposes of living your life, the only rules are going to be if you're not vaccinated, you're not getting in. And secondly, some masks in some places, uh, particularly where there's low vaccine, like uh, primary schools, for instance. Yes. Now, what happens is if you, if you, well, this is a little bit challenging because A, we don't know who's going to have to get a booster. B, we don't know when. I, 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 it's my understanding that the federal government will make some announcements about this quite soon. Atagi and the TGA have been doing their work and hopefully there'll be some clarity and some certainty very, very soon. But let's just assume for a moment that it's a six month thing uh, and it's for everybody. Let's just assume that. Uh, what will happen is, I, I, I hope, and we'll play our part in this, like a month before your six months is up, uh, then uh, you will get a message and your vaccination certificate, the thing that gets you the green tick, you'll be prompted to go and book, uh, to go and book a uh, time to go and have your booster shot. There may be state clinics in that, or it might be all done through GPs and pharmacy. That hasn't been worked worked through yet. We're happy to play our part, though. Uh, so it'll be about the maintenance of your vaccination status. And what we know is at about that six-month mark, that's what the international evidence tells us, that we do see a fall in the protection provided. And that, now, there's a whole lot of questions. Um, if you had Moderna, you know, what, which, 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 what are the mRNA you're going to get if you had AstraZeneca? What's your status around boosters? They're all questions for doctors and experts, and we'll come back to that soon. But uh, we stand ready to do whatever we can to assist the Commonwealth Government in rolling out those boosters. And this is, again, why the vaccinated economy is important, because those shots are going to be just as important as the first and second. That's why, you know, it'll be in everybody's interest, all of us, for the health and safety, for the health system, uh, and of course, to continue participating in that vaccinated economy, you will need to have a booster shot. But there's time for us to talk through all that, and we and we will. Hopefully, the federal government can make some announcements about that soon. Cameron, we've got uh, karaoke and nightclubs opening uh, this Friday. Can we dance? Uh, I understand. Yes. Outside. Uh, I'm told outside. I, I, look, I will freely, <laughs> I freely confess that. Uh, uh, they're important businesses, and I'm not diminishing them in any way. But I, the, the, I haven't necessarily given a lot of thought to p personally being at, at those sorts of venues this coming Friday. But um, if we if if we have to confirm that, as with all of these, as with all of the roadmap, uh, whenever we make these announcements well ahead of them becoming live, and uh, if there's any clarification we can provide you, we will. Getting them open is important, uh, but there are still some restrictions because 80 is not 90. Uh, but it's but it's it's not 70 either, which means the opening up is happening. Friday night's going to be a really significant thing, really significant. Uh, but it's when, it's when we get to 90% that we really have hardly any rules at all, uh, because Victorians will have done something that's quite precious, quite precious and almost unique. It'll be a higher vaccination rate than so many parts of the world, and it will give us the protection that we need to go to karaoke, nightclubs, all manner of other things. Well, it's about 80%. Yeah, but after November 24, there's no limits, right? Uh, no, no, hang on. There are, there are no limits. Uh, ho however, uh, we will have to set what's the capacity of a venue, for instance. So that's a state significant venue. Uh, they'll have a policy, there'll be a plan. 
that'll relate to things like how the, the bathrooms are configured, hand hides, all that sort of stuff. There'll have to be a little bit of spacing. And the reason for that is that the virus will still be here. It'll only be for vaccinated adults, but there's going to be a bunch of kids that'll be at that cricket match and at the footy next year. They are not vaccinated. They can't be vaccinated. So in recognition of that, it'll be a percentage. It won't be 100%, but we want to get it as close to that 100% as we can. Uh, and 80,000 is not just a number. 80,000 would be the biggest crowd in our country since COVID came. I reckon that'd be a really important day for all of us. So I missed the first bit, Simone. Yes. It's a very good question. I'll, I'll give you an answer, but I, I will just remind you, we will get you a set of words um, if there's any need to clarify further. If you can't guarantee that everyone there is vaccinated, then the smaller cap applies regardless of whether you're vaccinated or not. That's, that's the way I interpret that. Hopefully it's less and less relevant, uh, but let's, uh, we'll confirm that my understanding of it is in fact accurate. Uh, as I understand it, yes. So that would be from the Monday, obviously. So it would be the Friday night and then on the Monday, so a week from tomorrow, we'll have all our kids back uh, face to face from across all year, year levels. That's a fantastic thing. What does Brett Sutton think, and Ben Powery as well, um, what are they thinking with the, the not 80 90 plan? Uh, well, in terms of 80%, there are orders that will be signed by either uh, Professor Sutton or, uh, or uh, Deputy Chief Health Officer Cowie. Uh, later on in the week to give effect to those for Friday night. Uh, in terms of 90%, there's been discussions back and forth. Uh, it's, it, is, it is something that, it, it's just a fundamental recognition that Victorians have done exactly what we asked them to do and that there's no better public health protections than getting vaccinated. So they are supportive of the things we're talking about today and they will give effect to them, albeit the orders that will need to be written and signed when we get to 90, it'll be only one page. It's not going to be the, the big documents they've had to do because we've got a vaccine and people have, have gone and got the vaccine in record, record numbers. Uh, the, the, they're only not here today because the health minister and I thought we could probably handle, handle it without them. And a bit, of a bit of a Sunday off isn't the worst thing for them. So they're happy with essentially letting the break off at night? Well, I think that, you know, whether you're happy or not is another, another, ma another matter. Uh, anyone always wants to see 91, 92, 93, 94, but ultimately there's a recognition from across the health department uh, and a recognition across the government and across the community, I think, that once we get to 90, people have done everything we asked them to do and we're not gonna get much more protected than that. Now, having said that, I don't, I'm not, I don't wanna be read to be discouraging people because every single dose after 90% matters. It absolutely matters and if we can get to 91, 92, 93, wherever we finish up, uh, all of those jabs make a difference. So these will have to be orders that are made and signed by the public health team. Uh, there, were there was meetings yesterday, meetings the day before that, meetings this morning. Uh, they're all involved, they're all part of it. They've done a fantastic job and I'm deeply grateful to them. I thought there was more than two, isn't there? Right. Right. Oh, very good. Very good. Anyway, uh, yes, we will introduce that legislation soon, and we'll uh, be able to talk about that in more detail uh, once we once we once we do that. No, no. Health health advice uh, will always guide us, uh, but we're just in a different place. We've got we're going to soon have ninety percent of people. 12 and over will have gone and got their first and their second dose. That means we have many more options. That means that we have, we're now able to have the broadest focus, the broadest focus. So not just about preserving the health system and saving lives, but a focus that includes the economy and employment, infrastructure, investment, uh, health, well-being. That's not to say that things like mental health have not been a key factor, they have been. But at 90%, as I've said so many times, we have more options. Uh, and we intend to use those options. 
uh, because Victorians have done an amazing, an absolutely amazing thing. Just got to finish it off. Uh, but of course the focus changes. Once you've got the maximum level of protection you could possibly hope to have, because you've not only got a vaccine, but you've rolled it out, uh, then things change. Uh, and that's, uh, that's very, very good. Just on the last question, just on the Boxing Day test. Yes. They are. I can only uh, refer you to the federal government on that matter. Uh, I don't issue visas, or, and those matters are really not for not for me. Uh, we we hope that the only people getting into the country, I would hope, would be people who had had the first and the second dose and are protected. Uh, we do have a cap of 250 unvaccinated, or where there's some uncertainty about that. They may, they may have got a vaccine that's not recognised by us, uh, but that cap that cap's not going to be going up. If anything, that cap will go down, because we want. And listen, I've had this conversation with uh, Dominic. We don't we don't want to be encouraging people to be to come here who are not uh, protected by the vaccine, because if they're not protected, we aren't. That's the really important point here. So tourists and who can come and when, I'll leave that to the federal government to make announcements about about that. Yes. I know it's sort of um, sure. I don't have an update, but if we can get, but if we can get you one, oh, the Minister of Health does. So we're quite concerned about that um, facility. Uh, our infection prevention and control um, team met and sought some further assurances from the Commonwealth and the operator, uh, and we're looking forward to those issues being addressed. So um, uh, if I haven't yet, I'm about to write to uh, the federal government setting out the concerns that the public health team have brought forward. It's really just it's the site, as you, as you say, managed by the Commonwealth. Uh, and um, what we're concerned about is the measures in place at the facility uh, need to be the same, or at least the same kind of standard that we would expect uh, in other arrangements. We're not saying that isn't the case, but we just don't have the clarity of oversight uh, and we're seeking some assurances from the Commonwealth. What are some of the concerns that, what are some of the concerns that both departments have identified? It's really just a question of oversight. We've, we've got the data as to the number of cases and um, there's one person who is hospitalised, as I understand it. Uh, but it's really a question of uh, clarity as to what the infection prevention and control measures and other arrangements are in place, which we have clearly um, the opportunity in every other outbreak site around the state, but uh, for various reasons, uh, we're just seeking clarity from the Commonwealth around that, and we'll be formally raising those uh, today with our Commonwealth counterparts. You'd have to ask the Commonwealth. Is that We've asked. Well, that's why we're raising our concerns. That's why we're raising our concerns. Uh, these are people in Victoria who have got COVID, uh, and uh, we want to make sure that they're that they're cared for in the appropriate manner, and that uh, it's not passed on. Well, we'll that there, as the Premier's indicated, there will always be uh, some role for public health oversight in these matters as the evidence and as the research changes, uh, so does our response. Uh, the announcements that we made last week around reducing primary close contacts to seven days reflects a range of things, the high levels of vaccinations, the change in transmission patterns uh, and the greater clarity that we've established whether it comes to workplaces, schools and other arrangements. Um, we don't have anything to announce today, but certainly if the public health advice and the research says that that needs further changes, then of course that's what we'll do. do you see a day where only those who test positive have to be isolated? 
look, I'm not a clinician or an epidemiologist. Um, we'll take the best advice uh, as we learn more and more about what booster shots might do, what higher levels of vaccinations might do. That's why the continued role of the public health team and the research community and the vaccination program and the booster program is going to be so important uh, to keeping us safe and open well into 2022 and beyond. And then you're, oh, sorry, you're the Minister responsible for the pandemic-specific legislation. How far progressed are you on that and what kind of changes could we expect? Well, we'll have more to say about that um, very shortly. We're going through a cabinet process and it wouldn't be appropriate for me to comment until that cabinet process is resolved, but I don't think you'll have to wait too long. I look forward to it being resolved as soon as possible, uh, as per the normal cabinet processes. With schools going back to full time, what plans are there for rapid antigen testing to be rolled out? Uh, we'll, I haven't got anything to announce today, uh, but clearly once rapid antigen testing becomes uh, approved from the 1st of November by the TGA and the Commonwealth facilities, uh, we'll, have, we'll be ramping that up, not just in education settings. We already know that um, uh, a number of industry settings are using that. Uh, in trial purposes, we're doing it in health, uh, and we've purchased, in the process of purchasing over 2.2 million rapid antigen testings in health and care settings. Other parts of government uh, we're in close contact with, uh, whether it be industry departments, justice, uh, education, all sorts of things. But you know, they'll have more to say about that uh, as that date draws nearer. Rapid antigen testing uh, is and will increasingly be part of the important toolkey to keep us safe and to keep us open. Given that's going to be the case, have you ordered more than the 2.2 million? Uh, well, um, the whole of government certainly is in the process of uh, doing precisely that. So your justice settings, uh, your public facing settings, uh, education, all sorts of parts of government are looking as to how they operationalise rapid antigen testing, but they'll have more to say about that um, as that date draws closer. Yes. Would be up to yes. I guess how much has our ICU or our ICU staff have to be increased by serving Well, as, as um, uh, across the board, whether it be primary care and hospital support for treating people at home with COVID, which is the vast majority, or whether it's the ambulance support services, they triage people and manage people's transport, whether it's the emergency departments or whether it's the wards or whether it's the ICU units, all of those areas have been ramped up uh, and that's, that's required bringing in surge workforces in all of those areas uh, and that's what's happened so far. It's been within, if you like, the guardrails of what uh, the Burnett modelling expected. Uh, if anything, in some areas, it's been slightly below, but pretty much on par. Uh, and we look forward to that continuing. And I want to thank everyone in those circumstances. They are working incredibly hard. They are working under really stressful circumstances. Level three PPE equipment, 12 hour shifts, uh, really rugged conditions. And if you want to think about the sort of circumstances you want to avoid, that's why you should come forward and both get vaccinated and do your bit to get us across those levels, but also to make it easier for those frontline healthcare workers to do their job and hopefully to start to see those numbers come down and those demands come down. Last question. So we're seeing, we're seeing schools close just after, uh, just after a handful of cases. Uh, you mentioned rapid antigen testing before. Is there any time frame from when we might start to see that being rolled out? Well, I've got, uh, as the Premier's indicated, we're not here to make announcements about those, but certainly there's work underway. And when that work uh, is all finished and uh, the 1st of November date comes in, we'll have more to say. Should principals close schools after just a handful of cases? Well, there's uh, material gone out from both the Department of Education and Department of Health to principals. There's been multiple engagements with uh, school communities, both in the government sector, 
uh, the Catholic sector and the independent sector and those programs about how to manage those uh, outbreaks most effectively are well progressed and uh, like I've indicated, uh, if there's more to be said by then, uh, the relevant parts of government will have more to say. Um, that's an interesting question. Um, the reflection I've had is that our frontline healthcare workforce are the absolute stars of the Victorian pandemic response. Uh, there is no group of workers, uh, whether they be doctors, nurses, clinicians, allied health professionals, paramedics, ambos, pathology teams, uh, vaccination teams, logistics teams, I could go on, the list is endless. They are the people who have worked 24-7 to get us to this point where we are on the verge of amongst the world's highest vaccination levels. And that they are the people that all Victorians owe a debt of gratitude for getting us here too, and I think can repay that debt by coming forward, getting vaccinated and following these arrangements to make their life easier. Those people are the true heroes of the past um, 21 months and I have nothing but admiration, respect and support for their efforts. And if I can't clarify it for you, I'll come back to you. Uh, yes. So, for instance, we had earlier uh, indicated that I think it would be about the. F so we we're about five days early on 70 percent, and we didn't wait till the 26th. We brought it forward, and that's why we opened up the lockdown ended last Thursday night. Uh, 80 percent uh, is well and truly ahead of where it was supposed to be. I hope 90 percent is too. Uh, those settings are tied to that vax rate. So, put another way. Uh, people can influence that date by bringing their second doses forward, by turning up to their second dose appointments, no no shows, everyone does, you know, that really intense effort to, to get this job done, then we can potentially reach that date early. Uh, we will run into an issue though, because there's a bit of Moderna in the system and it's a four week interval. So a, that date may not be as movable as 80 and 70 were. But uh, if it happens before then, then the rule changes will happen before then. So I'm not, I, I can't give you a time when it will come off, but I think it's going to be there for the entirety of 2022. Because that's how we stay open. That's how we, back to Martin's point, you know, fully vaccinated people are not in the hospital system. They're not in hospital beds. Uh, the vast, vast, vast majority, 93 plus percent of people in hospital uh, that are really, really ill uh, have not had one and two doses. They're not fully protected. So just to be really clear about this, if you've made the choice, I'd respectfully say the wrong choice to not get vaccinated, then you're at a much greater risk of putting really significant pressure on our nurses, on our doctors, on our ambos, on the cooks, cleaners, ward clerks, everyone who works in our hospital system. Their job gets harder because you refuse to do yours. And it is our job to go and get vaccinated. Protect yourself, protect the people you love, participate in the economy, and don't make the job of our nurses harder. That's a, that's a pretty simple thing. The good news is we're gonna finish up being one of the most highly vaccinated places anywhere, anywhere in the world. Uh, the other good news, of course, is that more than 5 million Victorians have already gone and had at least one dose. 5.1, close to 5.2 now. That is truly amazing. And that's why we're here today making these announcements. Last question. Last question. So that's the, for instance, the 80,000 at Boxing Day. 
uh, rather than having 100,000 or 100,000 plus. So the G won't be absolutely full because we are going to finish up with a whole bunch of kids there and we don't at this stage have a children's, a children's vaccine. Hopefully that changes soon. As I understand it, the FDA is due to approve the Pfizer product in the states 2nd or 3rd of November. I think the states, I think the Biden administration have already ordered enough doses for all the kids in, in the um, US. Uh, you'd have to have a chat to the feds about our feds about what, what they've ordered and when and all of those sorts of things. Hopefully we've got an order in there and just got to wait for the uh, approvals to come. Like caution, for example, cap no caps. No, well, no, hang on. With, with, oh, yeah, well, we'll probably have people a little bit spread out. There'll be some rules around, you know, obviously you've got to check in. It's only going to be double vax people who can be vaxxed. If you're 10 years old, though, and there's no vaccine for you, then we're not going to say, no, you can't go. And that's why it wouldn't be at 100, 100%. But it's a bit, it's like last week I said, I want as few rules as possible when we get to 90%. I think we're, we are delivering that, uh, but it does rely on Victorians finishing off this vaccination job uh, and then going and getting a booster. Hopefully there'll be some clarity around that really soon. Uh, and particularly kids, hopefully we can have more, the more the Commonwealth can confirm with more details what, uh, what, what the plans are for them. Would that same level of more capacity apply to things like um, play centres, kids' play centres? No, no. Concert, for example? No, no. What we're, what we're looking to do when we get to 90% uh, is that there'll be COVID safe policies and plans it's a one-time thing. They'll be enduring, uh, but we're not looking to cap things, we're looking to get to where we can, as close to 100%. Uh, that's, that's what 90% makes possible. And of course, I, I don't want anyone to think that it's sort of 90% and then the brakes go on. It'll, it'll finish up going beyond that, I, I think. We've already at over 90% in terms of first doses. And we know that the vast, vast majority of people who get the first dose come back for the second. So no caps, no density quotients. The two rules that'll be in place will be masks in some settings where that just makes sense. It'll be a pain, I know, but it makes sense. And the fact that you're not getting in, you're not getting to participate unless you've had two doses. That vaccinated economy will be enduring. And so few rules is possible for two reasons. One, so many people have got vaccinated. And two, we're insisting that people use that vaccination status and the safety that it gives you when they participate. So what changes you if you're unvaccinated? Well, you can go and buy food, you can go and you can go and visit people if they're happy to have you in their in in their home. Uh, you, you can go and do some shopping for the basics, the things that things that you need. Uh, you can you know lots of different things you can do. Uh, it's actually an easier question answered terms of what you can't do. You can't get into any venue, any venue, and it'll be the vast majority of venues. So whether it's a bookshop, a shoe shop, uh, the pub, a cafe, a restaurant, the MCG, the list goes on and on. You will not be able to participate like a fully vaccinated person because you're not a fully vaccinated person. Now, I just, so that there's no confusion, if you are immunocompromised, for instance, if you can't get vaccinated, it's not a choice, it's to your medical um, circumstances mean you can't, well then you're treated as a vaccinated person. So we're not talking about those people, we're talking about people who with the greatest of respect, I believe they, they are making the wrong choice. Uh, it is their choice though, uh, if we, save and except where we've mandated, uh, and we have today added to that mandate uh, non-essential retail, for exactly the reasons that we've added everyone else into the mandate. Uh, being vaccinated means we can be open, being vaccinated means we can be safe, being vaccinated means that we don't have completely avoidable admissions into our hospitals and enormous stress and pressure on our nurses. Uh, please don't be part of that. Please be part of one of the most vaccinated communities anywhere in the world. Last question. Oh, sorry, I'm with you now. Well, well it'll, um, it'll depend on the nature of the work. Uh, it'll depend on announcements that have not yet been made, for instance, in relation to the Victorian Public Service and what our work from home, work from the office policy will be. So that's got to be done fairly, got to be done uh, appropriately, and there's engagement with unions and staff, and I'm not going to sort of make that up from the podium, but we're, we're, we're live to all those issues and we're working through those, and uh, as I'm sure many, many employers are.
way South Australia will go that far given we've got hotel quarantine options for those people. Yeah, no, the border will be open. The border will be open. Uh, indeed, yes. And you might not get back into the state you've left. That's the other thing. I can't speak. Well, the, the, yeah. we try and be as helpful as we can uh, in these press conferences, but I'm not going to try and predict what the border settings will be in WA. I'm not going to try and predict, predict that for an unvaccinated person. And we'll have more to say about New South Wales Victorian border quite soon. I look forward to a joint announcement with Premier Perrottet uh, very, very soon. Any other issues? All good. Thank you so much. Enjoy your Sunday. Thank you. Good work.